Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with the C47, and this is another episode of One to Three. What is One to Three? It is small to no crew production, something I think myself and a lot of you encounter all of the time. A crew of one to three people. So today we're going to talk about chroma key in production, and quite honestly, the secret is I hate doing green screen work or blue screen work, but it is a necessary evil, especially in the world of corporate video production. So how do we make our lives easier? Well, it's not incredibly hard to do, but one of the biggest uh, challenges that we have when we do it is space. Uh, to sort of set up a correct green screen setup, you either need to have a proper studio space with a psych, and you might have space lights, you might be hanging uh, Kino flows, there's a million different ways to do it, um, you know, remote phosphor lights, and either sort of creating a very, very even field up from a grid, uh, or you might be doing it with sort of the more straightforward way of doing it, which is setting up either a pop-up blue or green screen, or a larger green or blue screen, and then cross-keying it. So getting the right types of key lights, cross-keying those, evenly lighting that green screen, uh, and then doing a lot to create distance between that green, we'll just call it a chroma uh, screen or color screen, and your subject matter. Sometimes uh, we really want to get, depending on the space, but also just sort of the, the nature of doing it, the subject to be at least ideally uh, 10, 12 feet away if you can. That's not always realistic. So then you're doing things like cross keying the green screen and then you're flagging the, the, you know, the spill or the bounce coming back from the green screen. You are making sure that those ratios are pretty low. Um, I've done a whole series on that a long time ago on Gearbox, but, uh, but there is something else and I want to show it to you all if you have never seen it and if you have seen it maybe you've forgotten about it so um, it's by a company called Reflect Media and it is a really really interesting chroma key solution I'm going to show you all the parts to this and talk to you about how it works uh, I, in fact, just had this whole system up in Calgary with me with Chorus Entertainment and was showing uh, the group of six people that I was training up there sort of how the system works. So I got to bring it back down here to Joycey and I'm going to show you guys at least the beginnings of what this system is. So the first thing you need is you need some sort of uh, essentially um, step up ring. So this is going to be to whatever the thread size of your lens is, and you can get it in different sizes, up to the size of this ring light. So it's a thread size to 112 millimeter size for this one. Um, there are different size ring lights in this system, but this is the one we're using right now. So I have 77 mil to 112 mil, and that's just going to go right onto this lens. And later on, I'm actually going to put that onto the camera that I'm shooting this with, which is um, got the same thread size. But if I needed something else like a 67 or an 82 millimeter thread size, then I could just get this uh, from the company and actually do that. So let me just go ahead and thread this really quickly. And then once that's done, then I'll show you the other parts to this. So that just sits right there on the lens. And then we go ahead, and as you might guess, you're gonna go ahead and attach the ring light to this. And this is a little bit different than a conventional ring light. So that sits on top of there. And then on the other side of this cable here, there is a three pin positive locking, uh, basically XLR cable. That's gonna go into command central here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this in and and this basically has two two settings here or two positions on the switch besides off the first one is for a blue light and the second one as you might guess is for a green light and these can actually be adjusted uh, in terms of percentages there's 256 steps in total on here and this is the light at 100 percent i can tell you right now when we were using this light up in Calgary, that we never went over 20% on the light. Now, the thing to understand about this when you are using this, 
um, and you basically you're dialing in your percentage is it's essentially um, just enough to light the screen, right? So I'm gonna set this to 10%. Actually, let me just plug this in so you guys can see that. And there we have the green at 10%. And this is obviously pointed at the screen itself, but also at your talent. But what happens is after about, I'd say about four or five feet at this point, maybe even less than that, um, the green completely falls off in terms of it hitting the person. So right now I have that camera, oh, it's probably about uh, seven or eight feet away from me right now, um, if that. This space that I'm in, by the way, from corner to this infinity wall that I built is no more than about 13 or 14 feet. And the reason that this is an amazing system, as you'll see, is that it works um, kind of in the opposite way of a standard green or blue screen setup. So ring light here, um, you dial it to the percentage that you need so that it's reading green. And it's kind of a magic system because this is the actual fabric itself. And what's interesting about this is that to the naked eye, this fabric looks like a neutral gray color. Um, it does some mind tricks when you actually look at it in real life because what it has inside of it, and this is an eight by eight uh, with grommets on it, is it has tiny little glass beads. And what happens is you point this ring light at this screen and because of the way they've designed it, you basically get um, a completely on access bounce back of whatever the color is that you're pushing to this screen. And trust me, it doesn't hit the person, but it is read by these little glass beads. And then all of a sudden this gray screen looks like a green screen. Um, it's really trippy, I'm gonna tell you right now. And I don't know if it's gonna translate in terms of me showing you inside of the studio space. You kind of have to see it uh, to kind of understand what's going on. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Chromat, which is the fabric part of the Reflect Media System, and I am going to attach it to this. And this is basically just an adjustable crossbar, which I've had for years and years. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just use some rope here, and I'm gonna go ahead and tie this up. And when I come back, this will be up, this ring light will be on that camera system pointed in this direction. Uh, and then I'll talk to you a little bit about what's going on some more. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on the key light now, which I have moved over there a little bit. And this chromat background here is right behind me. So I'm right up against it. I'm gonna turn off the key light now and I'm gonna turn on the ring light and show you how that's interacting. This is at 15% right now, and obviously it's the blue setting. And then I'm gonna go ahead and switch over also at 15%, and that's the green setting right now. Now, of course, depending on the size of your space, and let me just go ahead and turn on the key, um, that will determine sort of the intensity of the ring light and you obviously have to make sure that it's pointing right at this screen so that it hits those beads and then they bounce back. Um, you know, it's a, a pretty fascinating system and when you're in a really, really small space, it can be uh, pretty amazing. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to pull a key. <sighs> pretty cold. Um, obviously it's not perfect and I did this pretty quickly and in fact just a little tip if you which a lot of us are shooting log make sure that you do your adjustment whether you're using a LUT uh, you're grading it you're color correcting and then just going in and doing whatever you're gonna do do that first before you actually apply the keyer because you're gonna get very different results if you don't um, so I've actually done that. I've actually gone ahead and applied uh, essentially my correction to the log footage and then actually pulled the key. Now I could switch this over, which I'm going to right now. And this is the blue, but this may have a little bit of a problem with the shirt. So you're just gonna have to decide which one is better in which situation. 
Um, you really only have to be, you know, about a foot or so away from this mat behind me. And it's pretty amazing what you can do. When I was up in Calgary uh, a few days ago, we were in a much, much larger space. So we weren't dealing with the same issues I do in here because it's so small in this space. Again, uh, probably about 14 feet from that corner over there, um, which is actually even two or three feet away from where I have the camera set. And then behind me, um, you know, altogether about 14 feet to the infinity wall. Of course, I'm not even close to that now because I have this right behind me. So I'm probably, oh, I'm gonna guess about uh, nine feet away from the corner and I'm probably only about six or seven feet away from where the camera is with the ring light. Uh, back to the green and you play with the settings. You still wanna expose your subject the same way in terms of your key. Uh, fill and whatever else you're doing. I just have one light close to camera up there. It doesn't really play ideally for a street lamp, uh, but I probably do need these gloves and this hat if I'm going to be doing this. And I'll see you guys next time on 1 to 3.